Hey everybody, welcome to Koenji. Just rode the JR Sobu line and the JR Chuo Sobu line. It brings you here to what I think is Tokyo's retro town on the west side. On the east side, it might be Koiwa or Shin Koiwa. This area in Edogawa is really old. And in this live stream, we're gonna be exploring Tokyo's retro town. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Uh, last time, a couple of days ago, we went to Shimokitazawa, which was, I don't know, it, it kind of had a vibe that was hippie, hipster town. This one is completely different, and over the next couple of months, I'm going to be taking you to different neighborhoods around Tokyo, so you get a feel of what the city's like. This is what you subscribe for. It's really exciting. So everybody, welcome to Koenji. We're going to start off going on the south side, called Minamiguchi, and over there you'll see what you can see right on the platform is a really old Shoten guy called Pal. P-A-L, do you see that up there? But from up here, you notice you can't see anything. We're gonna go down there and explore around there. And then we're gonna go, after we go through Pal, we're gonna go on the other side of the station, Kitaguchi, the north side, and take a look there. But you get the best view of Koenji right from the platform here. It's kinda neat. Yes, that's right. One stop away is not going to Broadway, the other way. And we will be going there in another live stream. So you definitely want to subscribe. You don't want to miss it. Here's the south side of the station. You can get a look here. What this looks like. It looks like a pretty typical Japanese uh, station front on the Chuo Line. The Chuo Line is famous for a lot of things as well. There it is right there. That goes between uh, Touch and Shinjuku goes all the way to the mountains if you ride the Chuo line. Going straight with a pass, you can get to Matsumoto and Nagano. Even further from Suwako, Lake Suwako and Nagano. It's a beautiful line. All right, and here we are. Welcome to the busy part of the station. Now everyone's coming and going. Now if you if you bought a ticket at a lesser fare right inside the station before you exit are fare adjustments. You can also charge your Suica card right here. And yes, everything's in English. With a very annoying lady preaching in English about how all fares there will be displayed in English. It's kind of embarrassing. Because <laughs> everybody turns their head when they hear the announcement. All right. So we could go north and we will do that next. That's the north side. But first, we're gonna go to the south side. And we'll take a look at the other side. The north side has a lot of retro re um, restaurants. It's easy to get lost on that side. Very easy to get lost because I have been lost before, just like in Shimokitazawa. All right, so fasten your seat belts, buckle in for a one hour live stream. I'd say 30 minutes, but you know that that'd be a lie. If we're lucky, we might even see some street food because these shoten guy are usually you get a, a very good mix of, of all kinds of shops at shoten guys. As you saw in the um, longest shoten guy in Japan in Osaka, Kevin Riley and I walked down that. Kevin, most of the way, I went all the way to the end, which is crazy. I'll put a link right up here in the corner where you can go and click over to that if you're interested. After this one, of course. Underneath the Yama, the uh, Chuo line, you can see on the other side, this is where we're going to be going after a short walk. That's the, the thumbnail, and you can see it's really, really retro over there. This is what makes this place really special, and that's why you have to come and visit Koenji. It's a throwback from an era... All right, so in the, 19, in the 1980s, Japan was having a bubble, it was having a boom. Lots of construction was coming up really fast, and the architecture is not the best. 
this here is a town that escaped that. It didn't have a lot of the bubble architecture, and uh, as a result, you can see more of the retroness of it. And the residents of Koenji love it. They, they like to protect that, and I wouldn't want it any other way either. Check it out. The alleys here are so picturesque. This is what I think of when I think of Tokyo. All these different buildings. Look at the cables up there. Air conditioners on racks. Nothing really matches. There's signs. It's beautiful to me. That's character on these streets. And at night, it's even better. And we're going to be doing these neighborhoods in the evening. If you walk along the, the Chuo line here, which is above, you can see the platform. And there's restaurants and all sorts of shops going along the Chuo line which makes it really beautiful. But we're here to start off. That's right, Jason, it is urban scenery at the max. We're starting off right here at Pal. And it says it's, it's, it was established here in 2003. So I'm guessing it's not as retro, but the Shoten guy in itself has been here for a while as a shopping street. Um, Koenji is also famous for the Awa Dori, which is a famous dance from Tokushima, but that's where its roots are. But yeah, this is the second biggest Awa Dori dance in Japan. And if you're here in August, you can't miss that. It's, it's, it's really crowded, but at the same time, there's so much spirit and energy in it. I have a video on the Only Japan main channel at the Awa Dori in 360 as well on the Only Japan 360 channel, which is been pretty much dormant but if you do check that out you will experience the awa dori like you never have before 360 is pretty cool this is a typical shoten guy it's just a mall where they've covered it on the top here this looks new like it's been redone again in 2003 it right up there but I believe the history goes back all the way to, I, I think it was, um, oh look, hats. So you get, a, you do get a weird mix of stuff. This does not look Japanese. It looks more like Aztec. No, no, I should say Inca, Inca-ish. No bicycles in the show, Tengai. But there was a law in 2001 that was very controversial uh, because of Koenji's retro history. And that, um, that led to protests in, in 2001 and before that, when Japan mandated that all electronic equipment before 2001 had to be stopped. You had to buy new equipment. Koenji was a leader of that because they had a lot of old equipment and they just didn't want to get rid of it. I believe that act was called PAL. Maybe that has something to do with it. Look at that, Daiso. The 100 yen shop has now got Christmas hats on sale. A lot of, in fact, you can get a whole outfit. Look at that. I'm starting to feel a lot like Christmas now. Again, all that's 100 yen. It's crazy. What? Oh, look how cute that is. Pet shop. They put these cute Christmas lights in, in here. It looks like Christmas anyways. And you can see the little puppies in the windows. Oh, look at that. Hey, little guy. How cute is that? Nothing like a sleeping puppy, huh? You want to find a home, huh? You'll find a home, buddy. Herf, herf. Herf, herf. Uh, he wants to go for, go for a walk. One eye open. That's how you sleep in prison. One eye open. Wouldn't know. Just watch a lot of prison shows. If you do like these uh, <laughs> neighborhood walks, click that like button. 
And we're gonna try some street food. Oh, look at this, it's like a little, look at this shop, a little trip to heaven. That's pretty nice. And that's more stylish than I would think a, a um, Shotengai shop would be, but you get all, all different kinds of shops at a Shotengai. I kind of like going to them, and I kind of like supporting them because I don't want this culture to die. Nothing against Amazon, well, maybe a little bit, but I, I still shop Amazon all the time. But people, if people stop going out and shopping at places like Shoten Guys, all these businesses won't will go out of business, and that's something that we don't want to happen. We want to keep the Shoten Guys running happy, right? She doesn't even have a head. All right, keep moving. This is the Vanguard. They usually have a lot of, this would be like Spencer's in the United States, which was in every single shopping mall. You got all this like a eclectic mix of weird stuff. You got that in Vanguard too. And they also have, uh, it's like a Don Quixote maybe. They have Gachapon right outside here. We can, we can take a quick look at the Gachapon. What do they got in here? What are they offering here? Oh, there's the um, strange animals. Strange spoon art. Usually get some weird one. Okay, Frozen's pretty big right now. What's that? Miniature sniper. Oh, it's like packs of gum with, with bug animal. It's um everyday objects with bugs in them. It's pretty creepy. I should probably get one. I think I will. What do you guys think? Get something for Kanai. <laughs> She's gonna love that. What do you think? This is pretty creepy. I'm just gonna. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see if I got 200 yen to spare. I, I do. One. One and two. All right. We're already starting. Can I, honey? This is for you. This is this is what you guys always give your super chats for, right? <laughs> this one. <laughs> okay. Let's see which one you get. Which one do you think I'm gonna get? The candy wrapper, the tomato, the peanut, the gum pack, or the um, milk? Looks like a coffee, coffee milk. All right, here we go. Gotcha, gotcha, pong. Oh, look, it's wrapped. We gotta see in here. We got somebody said there we got the I'm getting the tomato. Another one said milk. We won't know until I get this capsule open. The ones that they tape are always hard. Alright, I think I got it done. Most people don't keep the capsules. Usually you'll recycle them. Usually. Some foreign visitors take them home. Which one do you think I got? All right, let's try it. Let's sit for this here. Which one do you think I got? Last chance. Three, two, one. Oh, it's the candy. Kanai is gonna love this. Looks like an ordinary piece of candy. All right, let me open the plastic. Oh man, looks like an ordinary piece of candy. One that you would love to pick up and put into your mouth, except there's a sniper inside. I think you all thought it was a bug, right? It's not a bug. It's a sniper. I don't know. It doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to make sense. Don't try. <laughs> don't try to make sense of Gacha Pond. If you do, ugh. that's why it's fun. That's why it's super fun. All right, the Shoten guy pretty much ends here, but if you keep on going over here, you're gonna end up being in some of the nice neighborhoods. I wouldn't say nice neighborhoods, I'd say like retro neighborhoods. Again, if we look over here, oh, she got an Ohio State shirt on. Why she got an Ohio State shirt on? Go Bucks. You can see the retroness of it, right? Look at the cables coming off of it, connecting with the, the street on the other side. It's pretty crazy. For me anyways, I love that. I love the vibe. 
All right, let's go around now. We're gonna go back to the north side and check it out. <laughs> Walk it. So I guess Kanai is gonna get sniped. So we got some sniper candy. Are right, we gonna go over to the other side? But first, I'm gonna uh, take a look at the main street here. Um, once again, this is. I think this is Suginami Ku. But every single, yeah, this is Suginami Ku, Suginami Ward, but you're not allowed to walk around and smoke. And that's something that I like because it's nothing worse than standing behind someone who's smoking. You can't do that in Suginami Ku. Not all of the wards are like that, but they're getting there. They're getting there. Yeah. Yeah. Gimbal's been acting a little funny lately. It's kind of on an angle. All right. So on the wall here, this is interesting. You can see some of the culture of Koenji right here on these electrical boxes. That's the Awadori. That's the dance I was talking to you. That's the dance where the ladies, they look, they wear hats that look like taco shells. That's what I think. But the way that they crouch and dance, it's so much fun. You see the taiko drums, there's a lot of energy. This guy's holding a chochin, a lantern, Japanese lantern. It's just such a festive thing. This guy also has a chochin in his hand. Oh man, I love it. And they wear the, their um, hats, the guys do. It makes it look like a little mustache. Everything has a reason, but don't ask the locals because even in Tokushima, they don't know why. They don't know why the, the ladies wear hats that look like taco shells. One is because maybe they would use it to get water or funnel it or something out in the fields but this looks like a video game it's like 8-bit that's pretty cool actually Nosh writes in very importantly it's only two stops away from Shinjuku on the express trains I didn't take the express train thus this live stream started a few minutes late um, this reminds me right here when I look at these of and I guess Nosh is going to put the link in the description on Discord. The Discord server, we're having an emoji contest where if you have emojis or screenshots that you like, you can add it to... Um, that might be an interesting one. You can add it to the Discord server and it might come up on Only in Japan Go because I'm going to be putting emojis on here so that when you go through the chat, we're going to have emojis where you can use that. That's going to be pretty cool. So it's up to you. We're, I'm going to you, the viewers, for emoji ideas. Oh, okay, look at this. I like this. It's not really crowded, you, you, but that's a good thing, right? I'm sure at night it has a totally different feel. We're gonna wait for that red light to turn green or blue, as we say in Japan. But again, on the electrical boxes, you can see more more information about the festival. This is awesome. It's an Amigasa. That's the name of the taco shell hat. Amigasa, Odaiko, Seta. That's the name of the slippers, not Geita, but Seta. Yeah, that's a, a Takahari Chochin. That's the name of it. I love this. A Shamisen, a Fue, which is flute. Tabi, which is the socks. Oh, oh I don't want to miss this light. The written rule is if somebody is running on a red light, you can run too. <laughs> That's the unwritten rule. If someone else is, is crossing, everybody looks at each other and then they'll just all cross. But if no one's crossing, no one wants to be the one to take the sniper hit. No one wants to be the one that gets sniped by the police. So if one person does it, everybody starts to do it. So you get a little bit of feel of, of the south side before we turn our attentions to the other side. Outside. North side. I believe I came here. Yeah, didn't I? I came here with um, uh, Simon and Martina about a year ago with Kanai on a date, and we um, had some really nice food here in Koenji. It's such a beautiful area. I'm afraid. I'm almost afraid. There's some antiques in there. I'm almost afraid to show this to you guys because I don't know. This is one of these secret neighborhoods. It's not that secret. Nosh knows about it. He was talking about it in uh, um, the Shimokita.
Zawa episode, and that's one reason why I might be here. Maybe. Right, we're heading back towards the um, Koenji station right now. But it's when you explore, go off-road, you start to find things in these alleys, like this, what looks like a used clothes store. And you can see it's very residential, very quiet. There's a couple of vending machines on the corner, parking spot. And then there's like this used clothing store. Look at that. It looks like a fun store. This, this is something that looks like it would be from Ameyoko near Ueno and Okachimachi. Kind of old. And above it is a residence. People live up here and on the first floor is used clothing. Thrift shop, they call it, right? Very hipster. This is a little Shimokita right here. Look at it, the clothes racks goes all the way over towards the other street. In fact, the clothes racks wrap around the side of it too. What? Oh, this is another shop. It's called Antique Wasabi. Like the name, Ladies Vintage. Ladies, are you watching this? Whoa, look at that UK t-shirt. What would Austin Powers say? Schwing. Totally different movie, I know. Probably will hear it in the chats. Awesome, look at that. Look at that chair. Oh, I gotta sit in this. If you guys come here, you can. You have to come and sit in this chair. It's a smoking chair. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So that's across the street from the antique shops. See what I'm talking about? Like it's, it's just some small business owners that came up with these ideas. You have all of these really interesting shops and you have to, you have to walk the streets to figure it out. This one looks like a um, character shop above a flower shop. Is that, that's, and then above that, a massage parlor. That's weird, right? There's massage. You can get that after you've been playing games all day. It looks like actually you'll have some comic books and some characters in there. Not an arcade. And then the flower shop looks really nice, but what a mix. Over here on the left side, you can see on the, uh, down the road we walked from there. That's the uh, PAL Shotengai. Just to give you an idea. It's, it's, it's so weird. It's awesome. It doesn't make sense. Don't try, to, don't try to explain everything sometimes. You just enjoy it. Now, a little history about Koenji. This area used to be called, well, there used to be a neighboring town that no longer exists. It was called Mabashi. Ma was the kanji for horse and bashi means bridge. So it was horse bridge. And that town was absorbed by Koenji. Um, not sure when, but you'll see some remnants of it in the name of the shrines and the parks around here. But I'm sure people, before they entered the city of Tokyo, maybe this was a, they would come on horse. And Shinjuku means new, and Juku means inn or hotel. So people would stay in Shinjuku before going into Edo. It was this kind of a place where a lot of hotels were. That's what the name Shinjuku means. Harajuku is the old inn area, not too far away from Shinjuku. So it's kind of neat when you know the, the meaning of the names of the places that are so famous. And Koenji just means old temple. It's kind of named for the old temple. Yeah, look at that Whistler. It's all leather stuff. That's really nice. I think I might come back here. It's like dude stuff. Oh, those are L.L. Bean boots. What? How nice. This is pretty cool. I think this is all thrift stuff too. Look at that. I could see myself wearing some of these. This is some quote unquote vintage. That's the key word here, vintage. I have some vintage boots just like this. All brown, look at that. Wow. Awesome. 
And let's climb this hill to go back to the station. <laughs> kind of is gonna freak. I'm gonna put it on the table. It'd be better if it was like a cockroach in there, right? Just saying. It'd be a lot more fun if it was a bug. Kind of looks like it. This is, um, yeah, it says uh, one of the temples, I think, in the Mabashi area. Or shrine, sorry. You can tell the difference between a shrine and a temple. Shrines are Shinto, temples are, are Buddhist. Oh, there's a curry rice place. Just take a quick look. That looks pretty good. The pork vindaloo. They don't eat a lot of pork in India, so that makes it pretty unique right there. Pork vindaloo and the two prime curries, double curried. Smells amazing. I like the retro feel to that shop. All right, let's move on. Getting back to the station. I'm gonna walk through again and go towards, whoa. You don't see these too often. This is what's called a kisaten. A kisaten is a uh, old coffee shop, Japanese style. Inside it's usually dark and wood. And they serve coffee, but it's, Usually smoking is allowed in there, so I don't go to Kisa 10 very often. But Starbucks has been kind of short-circuiting the Kisa 10s. People just aren't going as much. The mom and pop shops are going out of business. And even the chain Kisa 10 are starting to go out. There's a really nice one at Shimbashi Station Front that I have meetings at every now and then. It's, it's kind of retro. I like that. There's the station up there. Very cool. There's the uh, Sobu line coming through. But we're gonna go, it looks like a tapioca place. And those will probably start going out of business in a, next year because tapioca boom is sort of at the end. No longer are people waiting in line for it. Right, we're 30 minutes in, we've already, we've already gone through the south side. So let's head over to the north side of Koenji. I was surprised though. I didn't see in the Shoten guy. I didn't see in the Shoten guy any street food or anything like that. So kind of disappointing. All right, let's go underneath the underneath the Chuo line, make our way over to the north side, and then we're gonna go down that old street. It's funny though that they put lockers out on the street like this. Kind of funny, not funny haha, -ha, just funny weird, right? And then uh, on the other side, so people come out of the station right there. And I guess you can come in here, this 24 hour uh, seafood is a kaya. This is a chain as well. It's nice, you know, you guys wanna see the menu? It's a quick look, see? They usually put a, um, a char grill, little teeny char grill on your table and you can order stuff to cook right in front of you. Prices are pretty reasonable, but the more you eat, the more it gets expensive. And I always leave at this particular chain or type of restaurant paying about uh, $25 to $30. If we have more, the more people, it gets a little bit cheaper, but usually we order a lot of stuff. That's the Izakaya way. You order a lot of stuff a lot of stuff comes on the table, everybody shares, and nobody ever takes the last piece of chicken or takes the last piece of whatever because it's like a sacred. You don't want to be that guy. But I'm always that guy because I'm hungry. So I will take that last piece on the table. Um, typically, if you're, if you're a tourist and you come to Japan, you're, you're not going to eat Japanese way. Izakaya is a little bit weird, but when you do go to an izakaya, you just want to order a bunch of everything and then share it, usually with several people. And the drinking goes on for two or three hours until people go home, until somebody says, oh, last train. 
and then you run over to Koenji Station, catch your last train. Kanai and I, that's what Kanai and I did when we went to, we came here to eat with um, um, Sam and Martina. Oh, I think there was a, a, um, a craft beer place that we drank at last time. All right, this is where things start to get really interesting. In Koenji, you can see here, there are lots and lots of alleys and nothing really makes a lot of sense. This is the meat of the, the meat of the town here. This is my, one of the places that I like. We're gonna go back into the maze and just check it out and see if we can get, get lost a little bit. So if you're watching along, I put a link in the description of the map that there is the station and we're on the north side right now. So I've just come out here. This is the roundabout that's on the Google Maps. So now you can find me 30 minutes in. This is the uh, Yakiniku restaurant in Yoshinoya. It smells like meat. It smells really good. All right, let's, let's stay on this side and go back here. And then we're gonna come out the opening on the other side. Look at that. Sometimes you'll see these vending machines. This is not a Coca-Cola sanctioned machine, just another company. And uh, they have kind of weird drinks sometimes. So I always stop and take a quick look because you never know. A lot of these things I've never seen before. Whoa, it smells so good like a barbecue. UCC, which is one of the biggest coffee importers in the world. A lot of you don't know that. Before Starbucks, they were the biggest they're the biggest buyers of uh, Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee, which I thought was interesting. And they take that Blue Mountain, they have a lot of plantations there, and they mix it up and make Blue Mountain blend, which they charge an arm and a leg for. Because back there in the bubble era, Blue Mountain, you, you can see, the, you can see the, the cloud of meat smoke. Do you see it? It's a, it smells so good. But the blue, the blue Mountain coffee in the 80s, Japan had a bunch of money during the bubble era. So the story goes, I cannot confirm, but UCC, that's when they started investing heavily in Jamaican Blue Mountain. And they own, I think 80% of Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee. The fields there, it's pretty crazy. So UCC is a very profitable company, or at least I thought they were, but they don't know what to do. I don't think they have a good direction. They're the ones, they're the importers of K-Cup technology. I don't see too much stuff here. They're the importers of the K-Cup technology and K-Cup is failing miserably in Japan because UCC has no, what's the word? Imagination. They don't have enough imagination. To... And licensing is hard. And anyways, it's probably better for the environment not to use K-Cups. Nice. This is a nice area. There's a barber shop there. You get some residents here. I don't want to show too, too much, but you can see it's just walled in there. There's a gate. A lot of the residents in the cities, especially if it's family owned for a long time, the plots of land that they have are massive. I want you to take a look at how, how big that house is. All right. They've probably had that plot of land since well before the Edo period. This is a massive plot of land and there's even a little little um, tori in there, a little, little shrine inside, you see, inside the house. That's a really expensive piece of property, but they've built a house there. And I think um, it's interesting to see that in the center of Tokyo, well, not it's just a little bit outside. That's an expensive piece of land. It's a little yakitori place with seats outside. It's very Japanese. <laughs> Smells wonderful. Look at that, they're grilling right here. You can get it to go. Whoosh. I'll be back. All right, let's walk over to the entrance of uh, another retro part on the north side. Here's a, looks like Vietnam, Vietnamese and Chinese. 
a lot of, wow, that does look like China inside there. That's pretty authentic. Ah, oh, smells wonderful. We got a mix of so many different foods in my nose right now. Got the Yakiniku place that we walked by a couple of minutes ago, as well as the Vietnamese restaurant and the Chinese restaurant with the, the uh, sweet and sour pork pumping outside the door from the kitchen. Smells great. There's Koenji Station again. So we're just gonna wrap around over towards the famous area. Bookstore, more alleys. So how much, how much does it cost to get an apartment in Koenji? You might be wondering. Well, right here is a shop. This one is room 101, which is on the first floor of this building here. It's going for about $700 a month. You have one room, which is six tatami mats right here. It's not very big. And then you have another one. This is the kitchen. It's 2.8 tatami. That's really small. I think you can, f two people cooking in here is really tight. It's probably got one burner. And then look at the bathtub is ridiculously small. The bathtub and the toilet are separated. This is, oh, this is one of these small bathtubs. That's one of these small old bathtubs. I've, I've been in some of these. You can't, you can't stretch long. You have to go like this, right? But it's deeper than the typical bathtub. It's deeper. So you, you can kind of, two people maybe, like a baby and a, a father and a son can bathe together in there, but it's not very comfortable. You can't stretch your legs. That's the kind of house. So it's, it's definitely older older style this one's got a one room which is really big and a little kitchenette here that's about seven hundred dollars a little bit more than seven hundred dollars it looks clean it looks like it's been modernized that's, that's nice this is we would call this a uh, this is a one room one r type this is uh, six hundred and twenty dollars maybe per month it's got six tatami mats i like tatami and a really small kitchen I'd say that's like three tatami mats, the bathroom and the, again, an old bathtub and the kitchen are, it's like all really connected. I don't, I can't live in a place like that anymore. I did when I first moved to Japan. If you decide to move here permanently, you can't live out of these and have a family. Kanai would like divorce me if I had a one room. It's like, what's, what's your problem? 40 year old dude living in a one room apartment. Not that, not that there's anything wrong with it. Just saying. Yeah, wow, it looks so different. The last time I was here was during this, during the um, festival, the Awadori festival. That's what it looks like in the summer during the festival. And then today, it's just sort of, eh, it's Koenji. But I don't know, I, I think even when there's no festival, you should still come here for a visit. This is the main thoroughfare. This is the the main area where the festival goes through filled with people it's so vibrant so loud so crowded right here and now we're gonna go down this road here this is also where you see the festival go through the uh koenji it's another another kind of shopping street but it's not a shoten guy because there's no cover you know, I think you're starting to get the hang of it. The Shoten guys are all covered. This 7-Eleven is so busy during the festival too. I've been to the Koenji Dori twice in the last uh, 15 years that I've been living in Tokyo. Ah, oh, there's the Aburi Soba. I didn't know they had a chain here. Aburi Soba is pretty good. It doesn't have the soup. It's basically noodles. It will fill you up. Wow, that's new. Tex-Mex, I don't remember that being there. Or maybe I just didn't see it because of the festival. Hey, Zato71's in the house. How you doing? You're joining us at a good time. Shoten guy is, 
is usually covered. I, I haven't seen too many where it's not. Sabino Cruz from San Francisco. If you want, you can write where you're watching from. It's always neat to see where audience is from. It's kind of a neat, look at these mats. That would be nice in front of our door. Get a little cute dog before we enter. You see a nice face with the dog saying welcome or this kitty cat, look at that. How neat is that? Wow. It smells like a, it smells like one of those um, like Spencer shops, weird incense coming out of there. This is a neat little izakaya. You can see the colored uh, chochin. These red chochin or lanterns designate an izakaya. They're selling hoppy, which is like a, a hoppy drink with no alcohol, and then they, like a hop drink with no alcohol, and then they put the booze in it second. That's what a hoppy is. It's, it's old school. It's real old school. Yeah, if you're watching this in the playback, you want to put the live stream chat on because it's really interesting to see while we're walking what people are, are talking about. Um, this is interesting. So that is, this is in front of a family mart. That's Katori Shingo, who is SMAP, but SMAP broke up uh, earlier this year. Was it last year? I can't remember. And he's next to an American Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny because it is time for Christmas cake. That's one of the big traditions in, in Japan. Everybody goes and gets a Christmas cake. And I, I guess, look, this is very interesting. Do you see what they're eating? Family Mart is, is trying to compete with Kentucky Fried Chicken. That is funny. So inside you can see they have fried food right there. Do you see that? They're trying to get uh, Fami Chiki. They call Family Mart's chicken Fami Chiki. As in like Pokemon, Pocket Monsters, Pokemon, Family Mart chicken, Fami Chiki. <laughs> That's cute. It's finger looking good. Do you think he really ate it? I'm not sure. Could be plastic. It's hard to say. <laughs> hey, Chris. Chris, how you doing? Chris Galger. Hey, John, first time watching from Oklahoma. Cool. Oh, check this out. This is another thing that you gotta, you have to um, be on the lookout when you're here in, in Tokyo at the in December. Nengajo. Nengajo are end of year cards. And these already have the pattern on it. You can buy them in packs of 10, I believe. Yeah, let's see here. I guess it's the year of the hamster. And on the back, the stamp is already on there. And on the bottom, there's a number, which is like a lottery. So some people will win some money. And uh, you have to give these to, you have to give these to um, friends and family and, and even to businesses that you've worked with over the year. If you've lost a family member, um, you, you're not allowed to send out a ningajo during the year. You send out a Christmas card or something. When we lost Mr. Seiichi uh, last year, we couldn't send out New Year's cards because we lost a family member. This is a Kushikatsu restaurant. This is a chain, I think you've seen this before as well. And they, Kushikatsu is one of the great Osaka foods that you'll find sometimes in Tokyo too. It's, it tastes different, I don't know why. I think it's just because it's in Tokyo. But 90 yen for one is pretty cheap. You can only dip it once. They're, they're deep fried stuff on a stick and you can only dip it in the sauce once and the sauce tastes so good. Kushikatsu, you gotta try that. That's, put that on your list as one of the top 10 foods that you must try. And if you come here, you also get gyoza. Gyoza with a beer, it's really good. And there's some renkon, which is lotus root. Oh man, I'm getting hungry just looking at this kaki fry, which is a oyster fried. Very nice. This is an Osaka. Um, wow, they got some kind of different sauce there. Interesting. 
So I like that. I like it. This one is a chain. I've been, they have one in front of Tokyo Station as well. So you'll be able to find that everywhere. This one is also looks like it's a chain. This is a gyoza restaurant, but of course they sell more than just gyoza. In here you have ham, katsu, uh, karage. Oh, I love karage. That's in my top one, probably. That's my mom's favorite food. She comes to Japan. I want some karage, she says. Mabo dofu, niratama is a uh, nira, which is like a, uh, like a green plant and egg. There's some, um, is that basashi? Looks like basashi, which is horse meat, raw horse meat. There's a menma, which is bamboo shoots um, with oil. It's pretty good. The cucumbers with um, sesame oil. And there's the gyoza. All kinds of gyoza. Whoa. There's the normal gyoza. There's the pon gyoza. Ponzu, deep fried gyoza. This is gyoza with cheese. What? Oh, that looks so good. This is the chain. It's open 24 hours. You order by um, like an iPad, which is cool. They'll find you. They'll find you. Eric Eggers is in the house. Have an interview with Tokyo Tech Company tomorrow in South Carolina. So I'll be so ready to be in Japan. That's really awesome. Yes. And if you get the job, you'll be coming maybe in the spring. That's the perfect time to be in Japan. Winter in Tokyo is, is not as happy. Look at the sweet stuff too in the window. I might, I might go in and grab something. What do you guys think? A pink, pink donut hole looks good. Oh, and they're already selling the Christmas cakes. I guess if you're gonna get one, it would be best to do it from the bakery, right? The thing is, I don't like Japanese cake. I don't, I, I, I and Japanese cheesecake too is not high on my list. It just doesn't have butter. It's made with nama cream, which is just whipped cream. And it's light. It's too light. I want something heavy that's going to weigh me down and make me feel sick all day. But, uh, yeah, it looks pretty. But it's not the same icing that we have on birthday cakes in the United States. Oh, look at that. Okay, this looks like a... Is that a ramen shop right here? Go back to the pink one. <laughs> really? Do you guys want me to get that pink donut? I can try it. They have more than the pink donut. Check it out. They also have um, wiener, wiener, wiener pan, which is a sausage and a baked bread. They also have curry pan. And that curry pan has an egg in it. What? It was been on TV. This one has an egg in it. That looks really good. And then this one looks so good too. This one has cheese in it. Look at that. It's a like a melted cheese inside of the bread. Yarisugi. It has too much cheese it's promoting. It's too much cheese. And this one has the coffee ampan. So they got some good stuff in here. Which one do you which one do you guys want in the bakery? I'll run and get it. I'm running to get it. It's up to you. Go for it, John. Starbucks coffee. I'm not, I'm not, I can't get Starbucks here in Koenji. That would be supporting chains in a, in a chainless town. All right, the one eggs. All right. All right, we got everyone says cheese, curry, curry pan, egg. Can we get the 350 likes? I'm going to go in and get it. All right, cheese, the pink one. Curry pan. Okay. All right, curry. Curry pan, curry pan, too much cheese. Get the too much cheese. Sweets for John and Kanai. Chris Hansen writes in, ah, animated innovation, that's cute. Curry, okay, I'm getting the curry with the egg. Okay, I'm getting the curry with the egg. Wow, yakitate? あ、大丈夫。食べてみます。はい。はい。はい。あ、
、そうそう、<笑>どうしようここに紹介してみんな食べてみてください。<笑>ちょっと、はい、ありがとうございます。今食べます。<笑>ありがとうございます。All right, so this is the this is the bakery right here, and it tells you the time in which it was baked. So it was made here at 2 p.m. And、uh, yeah, it's about an hour ago. So let's try this, huh? He asked me if this was a live, high, a live stream, and I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll try it right here in the window. Well, he was nice. He was kind of waving me in, so it, I think it's okay. All right, it's, not, it's, it's still warm. It's still warm, guys. Still warm. Bakery Antendo. Oh, wow, it smells wonderful. We say live stream in Japanese is live haishin. Haishin means like a broadcast. Haishin chu, in the middle of broadcasting. It's kind of light. I didn't think it would be this light. I thought it might be heavier. All right, here we go. Yes, I am. But I have a hygiene too. You see the egg in there? Oh, that's really nice. I gotta keep eating until I get to the egg. You know, one of the best curry p a n、uh, bakeries is near my, not too far from where I live. So I might take you there in another live stream. I'll call them and see if I can get permission. All right, I've got to the egg part now. Mmm. Very interesting. Look at that. Mmm, it's very, very good. Mmm. Now, you're not supposed to. Eat and walk around. Kind of like an unwritten rule. Everybody knows about it. It's a hard boiled egg. Yeah, Tiz B knows. It's not the same as a Hanjuku Tamago, which is a half boiled egg. I kind of wish it was that, but it's still not, it's not bad. It's good. How can you complain? It's curry p a n Even if it didn't have an egg, I would still want to eat it. Mmm. Mmm, very good curry. Not spicy at all.、Mm, a little bland in the curry, but it's got some vegetables in it. Some beef, I think, or pork, some meat.、Mm, it's, it's very pleasant.、Mm. All right, let's go a little round over here. What's this? It's called Bar 365. <clears throat> Not spicy at all. And it opens at 7 p.m. It looks like a dungeon. It, it's super small. How cool is that? That's not it right there. It's just here. Maybe it goes down into the basement, maybe? But we gotta come back here at night. I think a lot of the attraction is at nighttime. <clears throat> I love it when things when spill out into the streets like this. You can take a look at it. Some r a m u n e candy. Hmm. Over here, it looks like a very famous meat shop. They've been in business since Showa 42. I was born Showa 49, so 1974 minus 7 is when it opened. Let's see if they got any Wagyu. Ah,、uh, mostly pork here. It's mostly pork.
Wow, now this is the retro area. This is retro. We're gonna to turn around in a little bit and start walking back to the station. This feels so retro. And you have these alleys. Oh, I love these alleys. You can see there's trees coming out of homes that are right there. So people still live sort of within the nature. That house probably looks like a forest. If not, it could be a shrine. Maybe we'll wrap around here. So we're gonna walk off of this street. There's, there's people here taking selfies. I guess I guess they bought a tapioca drink and they're taking, taking selfies with the tapioca drink. That's crazy, or like a royal milk tea. A royal milk tea selfie. All right, let's come down here and take a look at, I don't know if the signal is gonna die out, but I just wanna see, you have all of these trees, including bamboo up here. How is that possible? It looks like somebody's old house. What? That's really, really interesting. Wow. Wow. Look at that, there's somebody lives here. There's bamboos in there. And um, Peter, he told me a story. He had some bamboo in his house. And bamboo is tough because it grows so fast and so wild. You don't see it in the city. It goes underneath the wall and starts growing into other people's property. That's why you don't see it growing a lot in people's front yards. But here, this dude has just gone, gone to town. And that looks like that house has not been renovated. It just looks wild in there, like a jungle. You can hear the birds chirping in, 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 inside. Whoa, would you go in there? It's so dark and spooky. That's so cool. All right, and then it just turns into a regular apartment, a pato kind of a mansion, but. I'm not gonna go in. It's just very unusual to see to see bamboo growing in the city of Tokyo because it's so it, it so damages properties, right? But this guy's made like a bamboo tunnel. I would totally live here, but I know that's not easy to do and not get your neighbors mad. Thankfully, this guy's neighbor's doing the same thing. Could be buddies. beautiful. It's, it's just like a raw beauty. Right? And it's just right off of the alley. You would never know. You would never know. It's right off of the main alley. Hey, Benavale's in the house. I will, I, we will see what's on the way back. We've already had a, one uh, curry pond and I should have gotten that pink donut. We're gonna walk back now towards the station. There's the Keating beer sign. They say that that looks like it was shaped, the Keating dragon was shaped like the mustache of the guy in Nagasaki who invented Keating beer out of respect. So it's shaped like his mustache. Do you see it? Whoosh, whoosh. See the mustache? Sometimes you have to really look at some of these logos to find the the secret meaning of it. If you do go to Nagasaki, you can check out his house. I forget the name of, uh, oh, Omurice. I forget the name of the guy who, who the, the Westerner who came up with Keating beer. This is a Yaoya. Yaoya is a vegetable shop and you don't see these too often anymore in the city of Tokyo. They're usually mom and pop shops. The prices are pretty reasonable. Uh, but yeah, they're kind of dying out slowly. You gotta support your local businesses. So the little yakitori shop. Ramen. Small bowl for even the small is pretty big. You get 1.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.
Is that eggs? Oh, this is um, size, the noodle size. So the noodle servings get pretty big if you pay just a little bit more. You know, tsuke men is, is very in, very good. If I have the choice between ramen and tsuke men, I probably picked tsuke men because I like, you can taste the noodles and the soup more. They separate it. The noodles are usually cold and the soup is hot. And when you dip the noodles into the hot soup, it cools the broth down, but it also warms the noodles up and the flavors start to come out. Here's in a flower shop. It smells really nice. I, the amount of different smells that I've had during this live stream are amazing. There's a little haircut barber shop. Yeah, bicycle is the predominant way to get around. There's a park over here, just right off of the main shopping street. You don't have to go far and then you can take your kids out. There's usually a little playground or an open space. They're playing Christmas music in the background. That was pretty cool. <laughs> you can feel the spirit in the air. Rum bum bum bum. Oh, this Where'd she come out of? She came out of that alley out of nowhere. Just popped right out. Awesome. All right, we have Hormon. Hormon is um, orful, awful, the innards of meat. And then they grill it. So boom, there you go. They also have pretty good looking Wagyu. Look at that. That's Miyazaki Gyu, says up here. Miyazaki Wagyu, which is prized. So much so, they, they show the certificate, right? Look at that. This is the certificate for um, the Miyazaki beef. Oh, this is the Matsuzaka beef. That's a, a rancher in Matsuzaka, which is the most prized beef in Japan. Look at look at the, he's he really cares for his Wagyu. And underneath here, all good Wagyu places will show this, the certification of the beef. Each one must come with this with a 10 digit number. Do you see that? And then you can go on to the internet, the database and search it when the cattle was born and when it was slaughtered and, and, and where it grew up and was raised. And again, it says A5 is the uh, certification. Matsuzaka beef is so expensive. You need that certification. If you go to a restaurant and you're going to pay money for Kobe beef, First of all, Kobe beef isn't, it's just a brand. It's not, I don't think it's the best. It's just one of the brands. Of course, they're gonna say their own brand is the best. Matsuzaka is pretty darn good. So is Omi Gyu, Akita Gyu, Miyazaki Gyu. It's hard to say what, why one is better than another. What makes Kobe Gyu really good is that they, they're very, very, very selective in what they decide to eat, what they decide to, to use and, and designate as Kobe Gyu. But if you're going to spend any amount of money on a steak, ask for the certification. If they don't have it, don't pay. Don't go, don't eat the Kobe beef there. It's probably not Kobe beef. You must have the certification. Ask for the 10 digit number. If they don't have the 10 digit number for you to check on the database, then it's not real. It's just run of the mill Wagyu that they're selling as Kobe beef. And even if it's not A5 Wagyu, they should still have the certification if they're going to use the Kobe beef designation. Just saying. We ate Kobe beef at the Intercontinental Hotel in Kuala Lumpur, and the chef came out and he didn't have the desi the uh, the um, certification. And I said, "Well, how do we know it's really Kobe beef?" And he goes, "You have my word." And I said, "Your word's not good enough. We want to have this certificate." And the guy was with, was he was just joking. He says, all right, we should eat for free. And of course, you know, we ended up paying, but it was pretty funny. <laughs> the guy was worried. He's like, really? I didn't know about the certification. I guess we should not throw that certifi the cer cer certificate away. Well, they shouldn't because that's, what, that's the proof that what you have is the real deal. There's a curry shop down there. It smells really good. There's some mochi. We're starting to see the New Year's, the shogatsu. New Year's mochi that people put out. You'll see it on, on uh, in Genkan, the entranceways to Japanese homes. Hi. 
So I don't see a lot of street food here, but I do see that this is a... What I do see is that this is an everyday livable town. Two stops away from Shinjuku. Two stops away from Shinjuku, people are living their lives and Here's a, a green tea shop. Serving green tea. Here's some green tea pots. Oh, they got different prices in them. With the netting, it's about 17, 16, 17 dollars for this one. 1,760 yen. That's not a yaoya, that's a tea shop, but we passed a yaoya back there vegetable stand. Ah, I can see the train over there. So let's go down one of these alleys here. That's a pretty nice window. The alleys are where it's at. Oh, look at the little decorations in this cafe. Just a peek inside. It looks French. It looks closed, but it looks nice. Looks nice. Ah, uh, look at this. Like down this really, really narrow alley and then you have a butcher shop. The spacious butcher shop. It just doesn't, it defies sense. And they're ser selling eggs there as well. And of course, butcher shops also take some of the meat that is still good and they'll batter it and deep fry it. So you get some really good tempura, some, not tempura, but you'll get some pretty good katsu. This is hide katsu, hide, hide, um, Hide ros katsu, ro, little pieces of it, ros katsu right there, cut up. And with some different cuts of ros katsu, different kind of breading. Menchi katsu, which is beef, like beef, beef meatballs that are deep fried. And karoke, which is potato. Be because they're doing uh, a lot of oil in here, they'll make different kinds, not just meat. Whoa, and look at that big piece of wagyu. Oh man, that's probably like a thousand bucks just for that. All right, let's keep moving. Here's a fish shop. So this is like a throwback to the olden days where you would be able to get everything walking around the market in one place. You get the fish on one side, the beef on the other. This is, and um, these restaurants are kind of new. This is like a steak, a counter-served steak restaurant. Kind of like Ikinari steak, but a little bit higher class. Here's another butcher shop in the alley. Wow, they got some really good looking pork there. Look at that. Oh man. That's Chasha's steak. Looks really nice. And some more alleys back here. Just walking down the alleys at night, it's a different feeling. Everything is closed right now, but if you come during the evening hours, these are all hopping. There's even a chair and two chairs and a table there where you can get a beer and hang out with some friends in the alley, right? Just take a quick, let's just take a quick look, see. Yeah, look, they're setting up for dinner. Here's the table. Ah, it's starting to smell, starting to smell really nice. Can you see yourself sitting here? Can you imagine sitting right here at the table with your buddies just drinking in this alley, right? This is awesome. Hope the signal stands, it's really narrow. Look at this little run down building. I guess there's nothing, it's, it looks like it's abandoned. 
over here they I guess this is where all the air conditioners are running I love it this is wonderful the, the character and personality of this alley is is fantastic this is on the north side of Koenji station look at all the wires up there just going it's I, you can almost touch it I'm not gonna touch it but you could during an earthquake it all these are shaking back and forth it's kind of scary scary to be here so lots of little little bars here like some people have put their plants outside very very old chochin do you see that but it doesn't stop just there. It goes up to the third floor. So there's there's other izakaya up there. That's so neat. And if you look here on the left side, look at that. This is like throwback of a different era. Do you see? Look at the hairstyles. That's an old calendar. Old calendar cover. But things don't change that much back here. Look, this is Orion beer, which is an old Okinawa beer. This is an old Okinawa beer label. How cool is that? Old post office post box there. You can really feel the neighborhood. You walk through the alleys. Kind of go off road. Look at Look at the connections for all those wires. It's just, it's chaos, isn't it? They don't do this in other places. It's like against like a violation or something, right? I don't know. Over here, another alley. I don't know who did wire them. The police patrol this area. I guess some people will throw their garbage out in this in the alley and they they don't they want to prevent people from doing that. And then we exit this alley and we're back in life. This is a hub here. There's KFC. This is that's the station. So we we finished come complete circle. We could walk even further down this way and uh, see some more. But I think you get the idea. There's a, a Turkish kebab restaurant. It smells good. It smells really nice. Whoa, taiyaki. It's one of my favorites. It looks like some really good black sesame kudoguma. Black sesame taiyaki, nice. It's a little, it's a little rough around here. It's got some graffiti stickers up there. This is a youth center. What? What is this? Like a? Oh, what is that? Do you know what that is? If you go on this QR code, you can go and find the the camera and watch the live camera on YouTube. Use the QR code to, to click. So there you go. If you guys want to see me right now on the camera, you can do the do this QR code, I guess, and it will take you to the channel. It doesn't tell, tell you the link, but it says here 24-hour camera so that you feel safe. But I get this is the YouTube logo, right? I'm guessing it's a YouTube channel. There's no link. You have to use the YouTube, uh, the QR scanner. Um, the QR scanners are also inside of the free Chrome app if you're using Chrome. Hello. The basket of babies. If you're using Chrome, then you can use, you can see these on here, uh, the link, and then you'll be able to, you'll be able to go. I don't, I don't know if it works or not, but yeah, the, the daycare center will keep the kids in a basket so they don't go running everybody, everywhere. It's cute, isn't it? <laughs> Look at them screaming. That's so cute. You can hear them screaming. 
<laughs> it's like a basket of kids. You want to hold on to that basket when you go down a hill. Come on. They say, don't put all your marbles in one basket. That's why they've got two, I guess. There they go. It's cute, huh? You, you'll see this in the daytime, out in the countryside especially. Lots of um, kids will hold hands and walk down the street together. And when they cross the street, everybody raises their hand. So when your kids... You have to raise your hand. Okay. So if you look on the other side right there, that over there is the PAL. That's where we started the live stream. Down there is a Shoting guy. So we've connected you with the entire Koenji area. Nosh, I hope we did Koenji as good as we can do it in the daytime. Walking around this area around the Chuo line is very, very special. Some of these stations are a throwback in time. This one is super retro. I think the only other place that might be more retro is if you go towards Shibamata, towards Edogawa uh, and Katashika Ward, um, to Koiwa, K-O-I-W-A, Old Koiwa. Uh, also on the Sobu line, you will see a town that's left that's also left back in the Showa era. That Shoten guy in that area is so rusty, so old, it will never change. It's perfect. So Koiwa is worth it. And I think I might do a live stream there then because if we're doing retro towns and, and Koenji is really, really worth it worth a visit. Absolutely. Especially during the summer festival. Especially during the summer festival. Very cool. Right now. McDonald's has the uh, Gura Kroke Burger for, for those visiting. I don't, I don't personally eat McDonald's, but they, they have something that's pretty new. This is a, um, a beef, beef demi-glaze sauce, demi-glaze. Do you see that? On top of a deep fried cheese gratin Kroke. What? That is a beef demi-glaze with cheese on a cheese gratin karaoke, breaded and deep fried gratin on a bun. That's, ins that's insane. And this is just a demi glace sauce with the karaoke, same one. But this one is mass, look at that. That's why McDonald's Japan is better than McDonald's America because you have something crazy like this. It, that's pretty crazy. I don't know, should I get one? I don't, as I said, I'm not like big into, I'm not big into McDonald's. Well, if we can get to 500 likes, I might. Fallen 311 is here. I can't get back to Japan for at least a year, so thanks for letting me experience it here. You're very welcome, and I, I hope that you get back here as, as soon as possible, maybe before or after the Olympics, because those two weeks are gonna be insane. <laughs> so thanks from Canada and, and Castle Rooks. Cass or Ox, I, it's a tough one. Thanks for doing these, you're very welcome. I love being able to explore Japan from the chair in my office. Oh, how cool is that? Yeah, I, I guess I can go for it. We're gonna have to get the 500 likes pretty quick because I was gonna end the live stream. But it looks like people are curious, right? All right, I guess I can go and do it. Let's see if I got, got some cash here. All right, I got a, I got a thousand. I, I'm, I wonder how much time it takes, though. Sometimes these things take, sometimes these take a, a little bit of time. Okay, beef demi cheese grakoro. Okay, um, let's go in and just try it. Hi, just kono beef demi cheese grakoro hanbin de. How much kai do you guys mass? Alright, let's try this here. We have to wait for the burger. They're making it right now. Can be interesting. I don't really eat McDonald's, but this is interesting here too. 
They've given me a number. Number 201. I think it's coming. the number pop up before I do now. <laughs> That's good. So the whole process is pretty seamless. You come in, you order, you pay, you move to the side. Hi. Hi. Well, there you go. That was pretty quick. That's what I ordered. All right, I don't know if I'm gonna eat it all though. I just this is totally out of curiosity, and this is this is for um, this is for you guys, okay? It's a little bonus. Can we get we got to get the 500 likes though? Hey, look, the kids are going back. They've been rejected. What happened? I thought they were going on the train. Yeah, it's about it's less than it's um about three dollars and fifty cents for that. It's a little bit pricey, but. Um, we got to get the 500 likes, so if you want to see me eat this right here, right now. Did I say 500 or 1,000? <laughs> oh, no. That's crazy. We're going to get the 500 too fast. All right, let's do this here. It smells like McDonald's, but it doesn't. It smells... All right, this is Kanai. This is acceptable, right? I don't know. She told me not to eat any fast food. There's a smile in the box. I guess I guess it's all right. Sorry, Kanai. This is what we're having as a snack. Snack. I don't I do not eat McDonald's often. Not that there's anything wrong with it. The beef demi cheese. Gurokoro. Grakro. Gratin. Gra. It's just weird. I've never seen this before. Gra. Gratin. Gra. Kro. Kroke. Gratin. Kroke. That's. It's weird. Okay. I, I, I'm seeing that the internet seems to like this. I should just retitle the whole live stream. McDonald's Beef Demi Glaze Gratin Kroke Burger. sneeze on that burger. All right, it's weird. It's weird. All right, at first glance, I do not see the demi glace sauce. Where is the demi glace sauce? Really, really small. I'm slightly disappointed. It's not under the cheese. Like, it's like, okay, you like where where is it, right? Where is it? It's it's like a dab. That's that does not look like the picture. It's supposed to be overflowing, right? What? I don't know, should I take it back? I'm not I don't wanna be one of those people. Let's try it. But look, it's gonna take like three bites to get to the sauce. That's a disappointment. And I'm turning it around then. But then if I turn it around, it's all bread. In the middle. All right, here we go. Oh good, we got 500 likes, awesome. Hmm. Look at that. That looks like the picture. That's um, cheese gratin. Gratin deep fried gratin croquet with beef demi glace sauce. That's what it is. Is it good? It's different. 
it's different. And actually, do you remember the um, Christmas market episode from two days, two nights ago? This is the challenge. This is something that I would never eat, and I'm eating it. We got a super chat for that. So, mission complete. All right. Is it good? Do I like it? I don't know. It's not a burger. It doesn't have the juiciness of it. The crispiness of the karaoke, the deep fried, is very, very interesting. And the cheese is, you, you all know what the cheese tastes like. The bread is the most surprising thing of the whole thing. The bread is, is not bad at all. It's very light. You know they didn't spend a lot of money. It's all yeasted up and, and such, but... The bread is surprisingly good. Like they put some mochi in it, so there's some spring to the bread. I like that. There's like a mochi mochi to it. On the bottom looks like the Thousand Island. I don't want to show you my mouthful. Looks like they put the Thousand Island on the back side. So. more of the bread. Oh, now there, now you can start to see the demi gloss. I mean, am I going to order this again? No. No, no. One is one is one is good. One. Wow. What you guys have done? You have broken my like years long streak of not eating McDonald's. Broken. I gotta go back to day one. It's kind of disappointing. And I didn't eat the whole thing. I left the bread for the crows. Did you like that? Did you enjoy that? Maybe they like the bread. City dogs. And there you have it. We end on a, a high note, low note, A note. It's interesting. It's interesting. That's what you subscribe for anything can happen in these live streams anything including a burger being devoured a deep fried donut with beef and an egg inside you never know but we learned a lot so thank you oh that's interesting Did you see here this is a, a bike parking lot in the station and anybody can use it. <coughs> but there's a vending machine required to get it out. And this looks very high tech. You can use your Suica card for bicycle parking. And it's available. That's also very rare. Most people just park on the street, but you get a, a sticker and if they tag it, they take it away as we learned in, in uh, the last live stream. It costs... 30 to $40 to get your bike back. So you don't want to do that. Leave your bike out in front of the station, at least not for too long. So there you go. That's Koenji. I hope you enjoyed it. Wonderful live stream. Come for a visit. And the next stop over is Nakano. So you can go to Nakano Broadway. And if you come to Nakano Broadway, stop over at Koenji. Have a burger, walk around the town, take some pictures because it's pretty neat. See the history of Tokyo in this city. Have a good day, have a good night. Don't forget to subscribe, support these live streams because, yeah, it's kind of neat. You know, walking around, having fun. Eating burgers. 
See you later, everyone.